Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Overclocking the Ryzen 5 2600 on the $1,000 Ryzen 5 2600 computer build. Link in the video description below to the entire series on this build. Parts overview, a detailed build guide, very long step-by-step -step help guide for anybody building their first or second or third computer, a detailed Windows installation guide, and a comparison between this build and a $700 version of the same thing, same CPU, same graphics card, minus some of the bling and features, mostly RGB and, and whatnot. But for $1,000, even with all of the RGB and features, it really is a great value. Now in this video, I'm gonna be talking about overclocking the Ryzen 5 2600, comparing it to the higher end chips. And we're also gonna discuss Windows performance, non-gaming performance. The previous video, I tested 13 games along with providing the live gameplay of those games and benchmark charts. That's also in that playlist down below. Go check that out if you wanna see the gaming benchmarks. But for now, it's all about about the overclocking. Before we talk about the overclocking part, let's talk about the stock clock performance of this chip. I think there's some misconceptions out there as to what stock clock performance really is. All of the game performance videos in the previous video were at stock clocks. Now this chip has a listed base speed of 3.4 gigahertz. You'll see it on the box, you'll see it on the product marketing materials. Yet if you watch the game performance video, you'll notice that most of the games were running at 3.8 gigahertz. It does have an advertised 3.9 gigahertz max turbo speed, but that's only under very light loads, single core, maybe two core. In most situations, you're gonna be between 3.7 and 3.8. 3.7 is the lowest it goes under full load, but 3.8 is a typical gaming load, and that's about what you'll see. That's 400 megahertz faster than the speed listed on the box. So if you're thinking that you have to do something manual to get a fairly good boost in performance, you really don't. And please note, all of those tests are on the, are on the stock included cooler, which isn't fancy, but it absolutely gets the job done. And I really wouldn't replace the cooler. If you're looking for value for the money, the Wraith Stealth cooler that comes with this does the job at stock speeds just fine. If you wanna overclock substantially, if you wanna put this onto a nice board and put a big cooler on it and get more clock speed, yes, you'll need to replace it. A Hyper 212, uh, either the black or the new RGB would work fine. The MA620P, which is a six heat pipe direct contact cooler, it's 20 to 30% more powerful than the uh, Hyper 212 series. It will get you a bit more, but temps are not the primary limit to overclocking on Ryzen. That's Intel's purview. Ryzen is a little bit silicon lottery based, a little bit motherboard based, and a little bit voltage based. I don't generally find temperatures to be the struggling issue in trying to overclock. Big massive coolers don't make a noticeable difference on Ryzen. The truth is the real limits to overclocking Ryzen come down to luck of the draw as much as anything else. How good is your specific chip? Some are better overclockers than others, but the reality is the difference isn't that big even if you get a good one. Try as I might, my Ryzen 5 2600 will not boot at four gigahertz. Cooler doesn't matter, voltage didn't matter, even 1.4 volts didn't make any difference. It would not even post to Windows. That's not a temperature limitation, that's a chip limitation. 1.45 might have, but your chip's not gonna last, okay, it'll last a year or two, but don't expect three to five years of dependable use putting 1.45 volts full-time 24-7 into it. At least I wouldn't, that's my personal opinion. 1.35 is about the most that I really wanna do. 1.4 I'll do for testing purposes. 3.8 was stable as a rock. 3.9 was stable, but yeah, that's such a minor, minor difference. My particular 2600 just isn't a good overclocker. While it certainly is disappointing when you don't get a nice overclock out of a chip, and of course your mileage will vary if you decide to buy a Ryzen 5 2600, let me talk to you about overclocking Ryzen in general, especially the second gen chips, which run so much quicker out of the box than their first gen counterparts did. 3.8 gigahertz, is only about 7% slower than the 4.1 gigahertz out of the box that a Ryzen 5 2600X will do on the included Wraith Spire cooler. The $50 more expensive 2600X is 300 megahertz faster. It's 7% give or take 
clock speed difference, 300 megahertz. Before you think that that's a big, big deal, let me offer you this thought. Even if it translated 100% into frame rate, which it won't most of the time, your graphics card is the limit there, but even if it represented 100% gaming performance improvement, Overwatch running at 100 frames per second on the non-X chip would run at 107 on the X chip. Yeah, that's worth $50. Well, maybe you think it is, but if spending that kind of money on more performance is worthwhile, what would an extra $50 do in your graphics card rather than your CPU? In many situations, upgrading your graphics card to the next tier up would make a bigger difference. To further make this point, I'm gonna do something that I've never done before. I'm gonna put myself in the bottom corner of the screen and now I'm showing you side-by-side -side game performance, Ghost Recon Wildlands 1080p high detail. One of these is the Ryzen 5 2600, it's this build. The other one, it's also a RX 580 graphics card, but it is a Ryzen 7 2700X. Can you tell which is which? Now I'm gonna let them play here for a minute because I want you without looking at the MSI afterburner numbers, which I have blocked off at the top of the screen, I want you to tell me, can you tell which one is the 3.8 gigahertz processor and which one is the 4.2 gigahertz processor? I am willing to bet that most people can't tell the difference. I'm now gonna lift the black bar up a bit to let you watch the real time frame rates on the screen, but leave the rest of it blocked off so you can't see the CPU. Now watching the real time performance, given that it's not a built in benchmark and that the numbers are different, can you yet tell which is the Ryzen 5 and which is the Ryzen 7? Still not figured it out yet? Let me lift it off completely and let you take a look. Now if you picked out which one was the Ryzen 7, kudos and congratulations, I mean that's awesome but I'm willing to bet that at least some of you couldn't tell the difference because they're being tested in different places and different times. The difference is extremely small. Now, as far as the average frame rate across 10 to 20 minutes of actual testing, yes, the Ryzen 7 2700X is faster by a couple of frames per second. We're talking about the difference between 66 frames per second average on the Ryzen 5 and 72 frames per second average on the Ryzen 7. And the Ryzen 7 is a $150 more expensive CPU, so I would hope it's faster. But going from 66 to 72 is not earth shattering performance. $150 would upgrade your RX 580 to a Vega 56 or a GTX 1070 Ti. That would make a lot more difference to the performance of the game than putting it into your CPU. Quick side note, those of you playing the home game will have noticed that the RX 580s were not identical between those two machines. The Ryzen 7 2700X actually had a 4GB card running at 1380. This has an 8GB card running at 1365. At 1080p high detail, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. That's 15 megahertz. It's a trivial difference. And 8GB of VRAM is not required in Ghost Recon Wildlands at 1080p high. So, Yes, they were technically different cards, but that has zero impact on that test. But I thought I'd mention it because somebody's bound to mention it and put it in the comments below. By this point in the video, some of you are about to say, wait a minute, where's the bloody overclocking information? I thought this was an overclocking video. Aren't we going to see some impressive, amazing results with super big coolers and massive overclocks? Have you been listening? No, you're not. There is no overclocking information other than this. Buy a Ryzen 5 2600, use the included stock cooler, and enjoy the heck out of an amazing value for the money processor. This is incredible. Six cores, 12 threads, 3.8 gigahertz, stock cooler included, $159, installs on an $80 to $120 motherboard, no fuss, no muss, and if you're not happy with that, turn the bloody benchmarks off and play your games, because it's amazing. It plays everything very, very well. Another 200 megahertz is not gonna make a difference in the real world. It only makes a difference when you're looking at benchmark charts to see who has the longer bar and no one really cares at the end of the day. Now I did promise you Windows performance and Windows benchmarks. After all, that's right down in the title, overclocking and Windows performance. 
I do have some benchmarks for you, but before we start with that, let me give you the short, sweet, simple version. This thing is butter smooth. Ryzen is amazing. I really do love these chips. It's not the fastest. Intel does make faster chips, but you pay a lot for them. This is by far the deal. Using Windows, launching a web browser, running Windows, installing Windows, everything is very, very smooth. Multitasking is quick. The performance of launching games is quick. If you're looking for something that can do everything from edit Word documents to render 4K videos, if you're looking for something that can play any game on the market, that can live stream games on the market, you've come to the right place. This will do it. But some people want to see specific numbers and specific tests, so I have some of those for you as well. Now I'm going to show you a very sped up version of PC Mark 10 here. PC Mark 10 is a free benchmark that you can download yourself and run it on your own machine. Higher scores are better. And basically, if, the, if your machine scores half of what this does, then in theory, your machine's Windows performance is half that of this machine's doesn't scale exactly like that, but that's the gist of it. But the benefit is it's a free benchmark. You can download it and run it yourself and compare your current computer to this Ryzen 5 2600 and see, is it worth upgrading? This next test is the Blender benchmark, another free to download benchmark you can test on your own machine as well. The longer it takes, the slower your CPU is. Now I've put two different tests on here for comparison purposes, Ryzen 5 2600 versus Ryzen 7 1700X. $150 worth of CPU gets you that much faster performance. If you are casual at 3D animation and video editing, the Ryzen 5 is fine and will certainly do the job. If you are serious about it and want real performance, then there shouldn't be any conversation. Ryzen 7 2700X all day long. But don't discount the Ryzen 5 for occasional or just casual use of 3D rendering or video editing. Two more tests that I want to show you that didn't really fit within the game performance video on this build, but they really are games, but they don't really provide a frame rate, they provide a score, so I thought I'd include them here as a bonus. The World of Tanks uh, built-in benchmark, it's really not built-in benchmark, it's a separate downloadable, but the World of Tanks 1.0 uh, engine relaunch benchmark, and then the Final Fantasy 15 benchmark. Now, neither one of these benchmarks 100% represents the performance of either game. In fact, both companies have admitted they're not perfect. But the benefit to those benchmarks is they're free to download and you don't have to actually play the game or own the game. You can download them and run them on your own machine and just like the others, you can compare the performance of this to whatever you currently have. Finally, that brings us to ADA64 stress testing. ADA64 is a program you can download and stress your own system with for free for 30 days as a free trial. Now, I do use the paid version because it has some additional features, but the free trial lets you run the stress test. And I would encourage you to give it a try to see how well your system is actually running under full load. Check all four boxes at the top, the RAM, the CPU, the cache, and the FPU. And the FPU is the important part. If you take a look at the temperatures of the CPU right now, you'll see they're currently running around mid 70 degree, about 75 degrees Celsius. This is not what we saw in the game performance video. And earlier in this video, Ghost Recon Wildland was running at about 55 degrees C. Why? Because all the aspects of the CPU were not being utilized. This is something I think when people look at max uh, temperatures of CPUs often miss. Real world use of the CPU often does not match so-called stress testing with Prime 95 or Ada 64. Now, if you're running Blender or editing 4K or rendering 4K video, okay, yes, you are going to run the CPU at about these temperatures, but this is well within normal operating parameters. This is not abnormal. The CPU is safe up to about 90 degrees C and anything in the 70s or 80s is just fine. Take a look at the power consumption. We're currently running about 75, 76 watts. That about correlates. This is a 65 watt TDP cooler. And so anything much beyond that, you start running into temperature limits. Now I test in a 72 degree Fahrenheit or roughly 22 degrees C room. If your room is hotter, then your chip will run comparatively hotter. It depends obviously on your ambient air temperature. If you are in a very, very hot environment, say 30 or 35 degrees ambient with no air conditioning, you may not get quite this much performance, which is why the base clock is a little bit lower, but if you have air conditioning, you'll be fine. 
And finally, take a look at the clock speeds. This is worst case scenario here. We're at about 3.7 gigahertz on all the cores and threads, but this is worst case. This is why we were seeing 3.8 gigahertz during gaming, because it's not using 100% of the chip, and under light load, it turbos to 3.9. All in all, this is incredible performance for the money. Whether you build the $700 version or the $1,000 version, Ryzen 5 2600 really is impressive. Gaming, non-gaming, no, it doesn't overclock very well, but it doesn't have to. At 3.8 gigahertz in typical workload, it's great performance out of the box for the money. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Hit the bell notification icon next to it to actually be notified when new videos come out. Hit the join button next to the subscribe button to directly support the channel. If you like this kind of analysis and deep dive, if you wanna see more and uh, deeper content than this, please consider supporting the channel directly. It is greatly appreciated. Links in the video description below take you to Amazon and Newegg. For all the parts in this build, please use them when you shop. Those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. And then further down in the video description, you'll find Discord, Twitter, Twitch, including my wife's Twitch account if you want to watch her play World of Warships, Overwatch, etc. And then finally, the comment section is beneath that. Leave your comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, ideas, queries, posers, and random musings down there. I don't respond to everybody, but I promise you I do read them. Thank you very much for watching. I will see all of you next time.